welcome back to the Pet Shame Clinic, where Vet Mark Abraham is busy tackling a clutch of cringeworthy creatures. Our next pet features in a love story. A love story starring Julie, her boyfriend Matt, and unfortunately, a 14-year-old cockatoo called Honky. She's very affectionate, loving. She's a very great pet. She may be a great pet to Julie, but Honky has a split personality. Whenever anyone else comes around, she will scream in a cage. Horrible thing she does. So I let her out. And then that's when she attacks. It's had quite an effect, I think, with my relationship with Matt. I don't really want to come here with the bird anymore. She loves it, but I can't see her side of it at the moment. I think it's something that's really going to need to get sorted out soon, otherwise it's going to change my life. Luckily, Honky seems in a better mood today, so Judy gets her out of her cage. How old is she? She's 14. How long old do they live till? Uh, it's about 60, sometimes 80. Wow, so she's going to be with you a long, long time. <laughs> Hopefully. So what would you like to happen in the long run? How would you like to end up living? Well, realistically, it'd be nice if she'd be friendly with everyone, like, because in the future, um, I might be living with my boyfriend. I'd like to bring her with me, but it's not really something that's going to realistically happen. Right, well, we can't have Honky controlling your house and if your boyfriend can come round or not. So I'm going to send you in to see Mark, our vet, and see if he can come up with a solution. Don't get too close, though, Mark. That bird will have your finger off. Tell me what sorts of behaviour Honky actually does. She will chew everything in sight, chew Such my a... post, to peck her own feathers, bang on the cage, squawk. So you said peck her own feathers, which is what we call self-mutilation, which is a classic sign of a, a very unhappy bird. Feather plucking is not the only way to gauge your bird's mood. Mm -hmm. In cockatoos, mm -hmm. the expressive head crest is the best way to tell how your bird is feeling. A contented, relaxed bird will usually have the crest held back with just the tip lifted. An aggressive or alarmed bird will hold the crest flat, often while crouching, hissing or squawking. And if your bird's crest is held very high, it indicates fear or great excitement and should be taken as a warning. Back off! But Honky is far from aggressive with Julie. In fact, quite the opposite. She also tries to mate with me, so... She tries to mate with you? Yeah. I How often she... does she do that? Uh, every day, pretty much. Cockatoos are unbelievably intelligent birds. Because they are so demanding, emotionally and physically, they need a lot and lot of stimulation. What's happening here, I suspect, is because she's already reached sexual maturity, which happens between five and eight years old. And what I think is, She's in love with you. <laughs> it may sound funny, but we've got a big problem on our hands because yeah. their requirements from you obviously aren't being met sexually, emotionally, physically. How can they be? Um, and what we're seeing here is, is classic destructive behaviour from a bird that's absolutely besotted with you. One other thing about cockatoos is that when they find a mate, they stick with that mate for life. So not only is she in love with you, but she's in love with you for life. Mark's got to find a way to bring this love triangle to a happy ending. So I think the most important player in this uh, threesome, if we can call it that, is your boyfriend. So I think we're going to have to sort of establish some sort of retraining involving him so Honky doesn't perceive your boyfriend as a threat. Leslie Jeffrey has got four malevolent moggies, all trying to be top dog. diagnosed a multi-cat household fighting over territory. Mark's advice was to open up the home for the first time and make hiding places so the cats can create their own territories. But it's not all plain sailing. Looks like Leslie could do with some help from someone who's used to dealing with cat fights. Very big cat fights. Here at Marwell Wildlife Park, 
Wildcats live together, so it's important their environment is designed to stimulate them to keep the peace. Do these ever have um, little spats, fallouts, or are they always really comfortable with one another? All animals, and tigers included, will have the occasional argument, same as we yes. do, we have arguments <laughs> over things. And it generally is a lot of noise and, and a little bit of showing off, uh -huh. but they very, very seldom would they do any serious damage to each other. It was interesting to see your enclosure and how you've got it, you know, you've got it laid out with different climbing areas and different places. What sort of criteria do you use to keep the animals happy? Obviously for the tigers here, the enclosure is very, very varied. We have the high platforms so they can climb up, they can enjoy a bit of height. We have grass areas, we have the logs for scratching on and we know how sure. cats like to have sure. a good scratch. Um, and when we do other things, we'll hide bits of food around, we give them things right. to rip open and to claw at. So it's very varied and we're constantly changing things around. It's a valuable lesson for overprotective Leslie. She's got just three weeks to put the advice from Mark and the park into practice. Join us later in the show to find out if all the hard work pays off. <laughs> Pauline Grant runs an animal shelter in West Sussex. She provides an idyllic home for horses, pigs, birds and rabbits. But one bunny has gotten a little too big for his boots. I didn't realise that he was going to be a giant rabbit. Ralph's behaviour problems have become very difficult because he kicks, he bites, he intimidates the other animals. When I take his tray out in the morning, come on off, he stands up and jumps at the tray, tries to knock it out of my hand, which he often does. But the worst thing about Ralph is his fearsome fangs, which he uses to savage visitors. Of all the children who visit the sanctuary, only one is brave enough to go near Ralph, and 10-year-old Ella is paying the price. Sometimes when Ralph's bit at me, he's made me cry because it's hurt so much. We don't understand why this rabbit has become so difficult. But where does one find help from with a rabbit? Pauline's come to the right place. The Pet Shame Clinic is open for business. So this is Ralph, is it? This is Ralph. Oh, my gosh, he's huge. He's still growing, we he's believe. St still growing. And how much does he weigh? He weighs three stone. And he bites. Oh, long, I say. Did you see his yeah. front teeth? So his teeth are yeah. about that long. No. Yeah. See, then he bit my arm. Did he bite you? Yeah, then? just a nibble, but. Mm. <laughs> well, it's not what you want, is it? A giant rabbit no. biting you. Hello there. It's off to see if Mark the vet can tame this bullying bunny. When you actually feed Ralph, how do you do it? Describe sort of the process of giving him the food. Yes, yeah, so I always just put the tray straight down in front of him. He just knocks it from your hand. What he's doing when he's lunging is like a defensive lunge. And rabbits, with their eyesight, they're brilliant long-sighted animals, but short sight, they get a little bit confused. Rabbits see things very differently from other animals due to having large protruding eyes located high on either side of their head. Mm. Designed to detect predators in the wild, they can see all around and even high above them, which means they can see danger approaching from just about any direction. But they do have two blind spots, directly behind them and straight ahead. Rabbits can only see things at a distance. Up close, objects become blurry and unrecognisable. So if you put a treat near your rabbit, it won't see it's there. So when you're, for example, putting food in front of him, it's like a surprise to him. It's, <sighs> it's suddenly appearing. So he's lunging at it because he thinks he's being attacked and he's defending himself. That is just so interesting because it's so opposite to a cat or a dog or a horse. Oh, absolutely. You know? So we can put the food straight down away from him and allow him to go to it rather than we go to him. Another thing we've got to do is sort of earn his trust in terms of stroking him. Because at the end of the day, you want a rabbit that people can stroke and that you're not going to worry about people being bitten. So what we've got here is an extendable stroking pole. And I think what we'll do is have you starting from afar, very, very gently and very, very slowly, stroke him on the top of the head. 
he's associating being stroked on the head with your voice. We call it positive reinforcement. Now with time, you shorten the pole, you keep stroking him on the head, and eventually you replace the pole with your hand, always talking, what a great rabbit you are, what a lovely bunny. It's all positive, and hopefully with time, you can become good friends again. See if Pauline manages to tame her maniacal mega bunny later in the show. Coming up, Mark the Vet answers more pet problems in our pet shame gallery. And it's the end of the line for JD the Knicker Knicker. <laughs>